And I'm Amelia. We are the co-founders of Wildflower Delivery Co., a modern sewing kit company. Today, we're sewing our face mask. To make this project, we'll be learning and practicing three main skills. Creating a fully lined item with two pieces of the same shape, inserting elastic into a channel, and top stitching on a fold. So let's jump in. The kit comes with everything you'll need to complete the project. Access to step-by-step -step illustrated instructions corresponding to the steps in this video, fabric yardage custom printed with a textile print as well as the pattern pieces, and a notions kit with pins, elastic, a preloaded bobbin, matching thread, hand sewing needles, and a seam ripper. There are three additional tools needed to complete this project. You'll need a sewing machine, an iron, and scissors. Before we jump in, I'm gonna explain the basic steps to complete the project. First, we'll cut out the fabric. Then we'll sew the two mass pieces along these jagged edges. Turn the piece through the openings on the side so that the seam allowance ends up on the inside. Then we'll fold the top and bottom sections to create nose and chin pleats. To finish, we'll sew the elastic into loops and then fold and stitch the sides over to create a channel that holds the elastic in place. In no time, you'll have a brand new mask and be ready to take on the world. So we'll start by laying out the fabric on a flat surface. The pattern templates are printed directly on the fabric, so you just need to cut them out on the line. A few notes about our paperless pattern system. The textile print extends all the way to the cut line of the pattern pieces, and the pattern pieces themselves are designed with a quarter inch seam allowance. So just to be clear, the seams are the lines of stitching that hold the pieces together, and the seam allowance is the extra space between the stitch line and the cut edge of the fabric that will end up on the inside of the piece. Because the textile print extends past the stitch line and into the seam allowance, even if you don't stitch everything perfectly straight, you will never see a gap or any unprinted fabric. The fabric is also printed directly with notches, so there's no need to clip them. Notches are small marks perpendicular to the stitch line that in this project help match up corresponding pieces and show where the seam allowance will be clipped. Great, we can go ahead and cut. The pieces are cut out and to begin, we're sewing the lining and the front pieces together. So place the pieces right side together now the right side is the bright patterned piece, or bright pattern side, and we'll pin along the zigzag edge. Now with pinning, insert the pins perpendicular to the cut edge. This is, will make them easier to remove as you sew. Now that this piece is pinned, we're ready to sew the first seam. If you're brand new to sewing, check out our sewing machine 101. We go over all the basics there in that video. Now we can sew. The seam allowance for this project is a quarter of an inch. There are guides on the needle plate to help measure. And on my machine, these start at 3 8 inch. So I measured in from there and found that a quarter inch corresponded to the divot on the presser foot. So I'll use that as a guide to line up my fabric at a quarter of an inch. Now, whenever I start a seam, I always backstitch to lock in the seam. This means taking a few stitches forward, reversing a few stitches backwards, and then going forward again over those original stitches as I sew the rest of my seam. You can backstitch using the pedal or using the hand wheel for more, more control. When I get to a corner, I sometimes will take that by putting my needle in, picking up the fabric, and then pivoting it, um, and then continuing to sew. So then I'll repeat the same process to the other side of the zigzag. We've sewn both zigzag edges and we've left these narrow edges open. So now we'll turn the piece inside out so that the seam allowances end up on the inside and the bright side of the fabric ends up on the outside. But before we do that, we'll need to clip the corners so that when we turn it, it will lie flat. The pieces are printed with little notches that can guide you where to cut. And we'll make the little snips <clears throat> about an eighth of an inch away from the cut line. On these 
convex, uh, on these convex corners, you'll actually want to take a little triangle snip out so that the fabric, when it's turned inside out, doesn't bunch up in the corner. Once the seam allowance is clipped, I'll turn the piece and use my hand from the inside to help press the seams out, and then I'll use the iron to press it fully flat. Kind of pressing these corners out. So we have the kind of general shape here, and then we'll use the iron to press it nice and flat. So now we have a fully lined mass piece and we can move on to creating the pleats that will give the mask three-dimensional shape. So take the zigzag top edge and fold it down so that the piece has a straight edge all the way across. So we're gonna fold that down and then we'll do the same thing with the other side so that they match. And now from the front side, your piece should look like a rectangle. And on the back side, it'll have the folded edges. So we can pin that into place and then we'll take it to the machine and we'll top stitch along this edge about an eighth of an inch from the edge and do that on both sides. From the front side, your piece should resemble a long rectangle now. And with the rectangle side up and the folded side down, we'll take this to the machine and stitch um, an eighth of an inch along the folded edge, back stitching on both ends. The folds are now top stitched into place and I'm gonna flip the piece over and fold it again. I'll line up the points here with the folded edge we just stitched and pin that into place. And then I'll repeat that process on the opposite side. With those pinned, I'm now going to fold the raw edge here back about a quarter of an inch and press that into place. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And now I'll line this folded edge up with the points that I just pinned into place. And I'm gonna pin all of this together. Um, and it's a little bit tricky because it's a lot of layers, but pin that on this edge and then I'll repeat the same thing on the other side, lining them up with the points. Now, I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna start my line of stitching right where the top stitching 
starts. So I'll position that under the needle and I'll use my hand to put the needle directly into that line of top stitching. And then I'm gonna stitch along this folded edge an eighth of an inch from the folded edge until I reach the opposite side. At which point I'll take four stitches across that line of stitching and then turn it and stitch parallel back to where I started and complete that, making a long rectangle. This line of stitching we just completed does a few things. It gives a clean finish to the raw edge of the mask, makes the fabric loop that will be the channel for the elastic, and also holds the nose and chin pleat in place. We'll repeat the same stitch on the opposite side of the mask, and then we'll be one step away from completion. Your mask should now have a pleat on the top and bottom to fit around the nose and chin, and two wide loops on the edges that will fall on your cheeks. Now take a piece of elastic that came in your kit and cut it in half. Take one piece and thread it through the sewn loop on the side of the mask. Using a pin, pin the, uh, the elastic so that it overlaps about an inch. And then repeat this on the second side with the second piece of elastic. With this pinned, you can hold the mask um, up to your face and adjust the elastic so that the mask fits your face properly. It's always a little tricky to fit things on yourself, but I'll rest the elastic over my ears and then gradually tighten or loosen either side until it feels right. But Overlapping it about an inch felt good on me. Now, the elastic should overlap about an inch and still be threaded through the mask. If yours overlaps a lot more, you can clip it back to an inch. Next, I'll stitch the overlapping section of elastic with a zigzag stitch back and forth several times. Then, I'll arrange the elastic circle so that the overlap part is inside the fabric loop. The contrast thread is okay because it'll be hidden inside the piece when I arrange the elastic so that the overlapping part is within the fabric. I'm also pressing the elastic all the way to the folded edge so that when I stitch down to make the channel that's going to hold the elastic, I don't actually accidentally catch the elastic or stitch over it with my thread. You want the elastic to be loose inside the channel so that it's able to gather the fabric slightly for a tighter fit. So I'll bring this over to the machine and stitch next to the elastic 3 8 inch from the folded edge. Repeat that on both sides and I'm done. So we're over at the machine and for this last line of stitching we're the elastic's all the way over to the edge and then we're lining up um, and putting our needle in right where that top stitching is. You can do a back stitch if you want, and then stitch down the edge. And I can feel that the elastic is all the way over and I'm not stitching over the elastic. Just back stitch at the end. 
and we're done. Thanks so much for sewing with me today. I hope you had fun and learned a few new sewing skills. I brought Amelia back to show off our completed face mask project. If we have to wear masks, we like to wear cute ones that match our outfits. Beyond COVID, we can see wearing these on planes and trains, and we hope you stay stylish and safe in yours. We are Amelia and Emily, the co-founders of Wildflower Delivery Co., and we look forward to sewing with you again soon. Please see the link below to check out our other sewing kits on our website and subscribe to our channel to stay in touch. Goodbye for now.